Number 47. Astronomical observations of our Milky Way galaxy indicate that it has a mass of about 8 times 10 to the 11 solar masses. A star orbiting on the galaxy's periphery is about 6 times 10 to the 4 light years from its center. Letter A. What should the orbital period of that star be? All right. So first, uh, guys, let's take a look at this formula down here on the bottom right. All right. So that formula, let me detail it over here. It says that the period of a satellite orbiting a parent system squared should be equal to 4 times pi squared multiplied by the radius between the uh, satellite and that parent system cubed divided by the gravitational constant multiplied by the mass of the parent system. All right. So in order to use this formula to, uh, you know, help us solve the for the orbital period here, um, we have to talk about well, what's the satellite and what's the a planet or not planet, but you know the uh, uh, the mother system, so to speak, right? So remember, any satellites or satellites are basically considered orbiting objects, right? Um, that orbit around a parent system. Okay, so in this particular uh, context, here's the sun. Okay, well, actually, what does it say? It says a star, okay? So here's the star of interest, right? And that's orbiting, right? It's going around on this circular orbit. Um, and it's rotating about the center of the Milky Way galaxy. So the Milky Way galaxy would be considered the parent system, okay? Now, obviously, its mass is uh, all spread out. But we have to centralize it in the middle in order to solve the problem. So they're asking us for orbital period. So that's great. Remember, orbital period is known as t. But in order to find t, when I know t squared, I would just have to take the square root right of both sides. So just be aware of that, that that's probably what we'll do at the end. So why don't we see if we, we have some numbers, right? We need to know the radius between the um, satellite and the parent system. And we do, right? It gave it to us in light years. But unfortunately, we can't plug in light years. So what we have to do is we have to do a quick conversion down here, right? So actually, let me start with by saying, what is a light year? A light year is the distance light travels in one year, okay? So you have to know this constant, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. That's the speed of light in meters per second. But I need to know how, how far light travels in a year, right? And that would be equivalent to a light year. So basically, i got to convert seconds into years, right? So seconds on the top, hours on the bottom, 3,600 seconds. Okay, 3,600 seconds in every hour. Okay, then what we can do is go to uh, day, right? I'll just use a D. Oops, hours have to be on the top because they got to cancel, right? And days on the bottom, 24 hours in a day. Then I want to get rid of days, so I'll go now to a year, right? And there are 365 days, really 365 and a quarter uh, per one year, right? So this will get me now meters per year, and this would be equivalent to a light year. So 3 times 10 to the 8 times 3,600 times 24 times 365. You get a value of about, um, what do we got here? So we get a value of about 9.46, right? 9.46 times 10 raised to the 15th. And that's meters per year. And that is the same thing as one light year. Okay? So now, if we know that, Sorry, if we know that. And we know that the distance is in terms of light years, right? That there is 6 times 10 to the 4, a.k.a. 60,000 light years. And you know this is how many meters there are, right, uh, in a light year, essentially. So how would I calculate then the total distance in meters? You would just simply do a multiplication, right? If this is the amount of, uh, if this is the distance light travels in a single year, and they're telling you you have 60,000 years of light traveling, well, just multiply it, right? So uh, let's take this value, um, and I'm basically going to just simply multiply it by the 6.0 times 10 to the 4, okay? And when we do that, we get a value of, let's see, times 6 times 10 to the 4, value of approximately 5.68, right? About 5.68 times 10 raised to the 20th, and that's in terms of meters. Okay, so this is the radius. That's how long it is in terms of meters. So we got that. 
Now I need to um, find the mass of the parent system, which remember the parent system here is the uh, Milky Way. So what mass did they give it to us in? Oh, fun. They gave it to us in solar mass. But what do we need it in? We need it in kilograms, right? So, oops. So what we need to do here, just erase this line. So I need to convert now solar masses uh, into kilograms. So what is a solar mass? Well, one solar mass is the weight of our sun. So here it is on the bottom right, where it says one solar mass is equal to 1.9 times 10 to the 30th kilograms. So basically I just have to take this value, right, put solar mass on the bottom, kilograms on the top, and for every one solar mass, it is 1.9 times 10 to the 30th kilograms, okay? By the way, I rounded this number a little bit, it's like 1.898, but you know, we're talking about negligible differences. So we get eight times 10 to the 11th, multiplied by 1.9 times 10 to the 30th, and we get 1.52 times 10 to the 42nd. So 1.52 times 10 to the 42nd, and that is in terms of kilograms, kilograms. So notice, I haven't even gotten any physics yet, right? I mean, I'm just converting stuff, all right? So that's really the hard part about this problem. So now I think I get everything I need, right? So now let's start plugging in some of the values. So I found that the uh, orbital period squared will be equal to four times pi squared multiplied by my radius uh, cubed, which remember radius we found to be 5.68 times 10 to the 20th. And we're gonna cube that bad boy. And then we're gonna take the gravitational constant now, 6.673 times 10 to the minus 11 and multiply that by the mass of the parent system, which was the Milky Way, which we found to be 1.52 uh, times 10 to the 42. Okay, now remember, um, in order to find just a period, I gotta get rid of the square here, so why don't I just take do this all at once? Let me take the square root of both sides here. Okay, don't forget to include that three. And let's solve. I'll put TS, TS down here for the period of the, the satellite. In this case, it's the star. So let's calculate. So 4 times pi squared times 5.68 times 10 to the 20th cubed. All right. Let's divide that now by parentheses 6.673 times 10 to the negative 11 times 1.52 times 10 to the 42nd. Okay. And then take the square root of this thing. And what do we get? Looks like we get a value of, so 8.4, 8. yeah, 8.45 or so. 8.45 times 10 to the 15. What's the time unit here? Seconds, right? It's going to be in terms of seconds. So remember, whenever you convert, you know, seconds are the standard unit in physics. Whenever you convert everything into the proper um, units, uh, your answer in time will always get spit out in seconds. All right. So um, here we have the uh, orbital period being uh, that many seconds. Now what we could do, oh, the ice cream man's back. Um, what we can do now is um, we can convert that if we wanted into years, right? We would just essentially do the reverse calculation over here, just divide it all out. Um, but I'll let you guys do that if you like. That should be sufficient though for the answer. And uh, let's take a look at letter B now. It says if its orbital is, or if its period is six times 10 to the seven years instead, uh, so I guess we're gonna have to do the conversion, right? Uh, what is the mass of the galaxy? Okay, so, um, so basically what we're doing is we're trying to, we're working backwards, right? So meaning uh, now what I'm, I'm looking at the same overall formula here, but now they're giving me the orbital period and they're asking me what's the mass of the Milky Way, which is the mass of the parent system. Okay, so uh, what we notice is we're gonna have to convert this though into seconds, right? I have to convert that into seconds. So fun, another wonderful conversion. I don't know about you, but I love doing conversions. So here we have 6.0 times 10 to the seventh, right, years. Okay, let's convert that into seconds. Year on the bottom, day on the top, three, uh, uh, 365 to one. Let's go to hour next. So days on the bottom, hour on the top, 24 hours in a day. And then we can go right from hours to seconds, right? Knowing that there's 3,600 seconds in an hour. Okay, let's calculate the answer. 
So 6 times 10 to the 7th times 365 times 24 times 3600, 1.89. So here our period here is going to be 1.89 times 10 to the 15 seconds. Okay, so notice it's actually shorter, right? We have a shorter period here um, than the value we calculated before. So, you know, if you just think about this now, if everything else stays the same and this side goes down, right, if I have a shorter period, then uh, the mass of the planet being in the denominator, that should have gone up in order to cause this side to go down. All right? So hopefully it works out to... to uh, be consistent with our thought, you know, with our uh, projections there. That's how we kind of check to make sure the answers are reasonable. At least we know we're in the right direction. I mean, sometimes it's impossible to pick up on a slight error you might have made in the calculation, but at least if it's, you know, some egregious error, you'll be able to catch it. So let's now, uh, let's now plug in our values into this equation, okay? I just found the period, so I'm going to do it over here on the upper right-hand side, guys. So the period here is 1.89 times 10 to the 15th and that whole thing is going to be squared that will equal now 4 pi squared 4 pi squared times the radius cubed and the radius stayed the same right so it's the 5.68 5.68 times 10 to the 20th oops times 10 to the 20th and that's cubed this whole side then over I probably should have reworked this a little bit right before I did all the numbers that's okay 6.673 times 10 to the minus 11 times then the mass of the parent system, which again, this is the mass of the Milky Way. So what we need to do here in order to solve this, I'm not going to redraw it just because, you know, rewrite it because it's going to take up too much space, but basically just bring this, uh, bring this denominator value on up into the numerator. Sorry. Bring this denominator value on up into the numerator and then bring this numerator value on up into that denominator. So we're basically switching them, okay? So after we do that, then we can simply solve. So the mass of the planet here, well, not planet, but the Milky Way galaxy, the parent system, will be 4 times pi squared times 5.68 times 10 to the 20th cubed. Okay, now divide that by parentheses, 6.673 times 10 to the minus 11 times right, 1.89 times 10 to the 15th. Don't forget to square that. It's squared. And what do we get? We got 3.03 or 3.04, 3.04 times 10 to the 43rd. And that is in terms of kilograms, right? That's the unit that gets uh, spit out of that equation, okay? In terms of mass, right? If we put everything in standard units, the standard unit of mass is in kilograms. So let's just do a quick, you know, mental check. Make sure that, right, I said it should be larger than what it was initially or originally in the first part. Here we have a value to the 43rd for the mass, and here it was to the 42nd. So again, I can be reasonably sure I'm, I'm, I'm right. Maybe there's a slight calculation mistake. I mean, I'm positive. I don't, positive there isn't here. So I'm not doubting that. But, you know, just always try to think um, ahead a little bit. Make sure you're traveling, you know, in the right direction. Uh, so that in case you do arrive at your answer and you're like, eh, it doesn't make much sense. Eh, maybe you made a mistake somewhere. Maybe you go find it, you know, turn that uh, turn that question being wrong into a question being right. And that might be the difference between an A and a B. Or, well, hopefully not, but, but you know, passing and failing. Um, but thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please do remember to subscribe. That would be awesome and much appreciated. And I look forward to helping you with the next question. Take care.